Now I'm gonna show you the best practices of Tableau filters that I usually follow in my projects. Let's go. The first tip that I have for you is to utilize those filters. So the extract filter, data source filter, and the context filter. I saw a lot of projects where developers really forget about them or ignore them because they are not really important in the visualizations, but they are very important for optimizing the performance in Tableau. So my advice here is for you to always have a discussion with the end users about promoting one of those filters that you have in the visualizations to be first an extract filter. If it cannot be an extract filter, then the data source filter. And the last option to optimize the performance is to bring it as a context filter. Because sometimes in the visualizations, you really don't need all the data. You don't need like, for example, 10 years of data in the visualizations. So try to discuss it with the users to say, maybe let's bring only two years of data to the visualizations, and then you can utilize an extract filter or data source filter in your workbook, which can has a great impact on the performance overall in so don't forget or ignore those three filters. The second filter tip that I have for you is about optimizing the performance in Tableau, which is avoid using only relevant values in your quick filters. So for example, if we go to the subcategory over here, we can see that it is currently set to only relevant values. If you use this option, for all your quick filters, what can happen? The performance in Tableau gonna be really bad and everything gonna be really slow. So we can go and switch it to something else like all values in database or in context. So we can go and switch that. And with that, you're gonna reduce the stress on the memory and the resources in Tableau. But let's understand why. All right, so now let's understand what can happen in Tableau if you're using in your filters all values in database or in context, it's the same. So once the viewers or the users start the reports, if you're gonna send only one query to the data source and the data source is gonna answer with the results back. So that means we're gonna have only one initial query as the user starts the view. But in the other hand, if you are using only relevant values, what can happen? The view gonna keep sending queries after query to the data source, always to get an update and refresh in the view. So that means the view gonna keep sending multiple queries for each user interactions, which can really impact the performance in Tableau. Because each time the user is clicking something or interacting with the view, the view gonna keep sending queries to the data source to get an update about the interaction, which gonna use a lot of resources and memory in Tableau and gonna slow everything down. Because each time the user is clicking something in the view or an interacting, the view gonna keep sending queries to the data source, which gonna consumes a lot of memory and resources from Tableau, and it's gonna slow everything down. So be careful with your quick filter if you're having everything on only relevant values, things might be slow. So if the users are suffering from bad performance in Tableau, maybe think about switching all those filters to all values in context or in the database. I have another filter tip about optimizing the performance in Tableau, which is avoid using dimensions with high cardinality as a quick filters. Those dimensions might impact the performance in Tableau. But first, let's understand what is cardinality. So cardinality is the number of distinct values in a field. For example, in our database, we have the customer ID. We have around 800 customers ID and we have a lot of products names. So those two fields considered to be high cardinality dimensions. In the other hand, we have another dimensions, for example, the Degree, we have only three values or the countries in our database we have only four countries and the subcategory as well we have only 17 subcategories those dimensions considered to be a low cardinality and if you are using them the performance is going to be okay but if you are start using those dimensions with high cardinality the performance might be bad so the best practice here is to avoid using high cardinality all right so back to our quick filters in our view as you can see the category and the subcategory there are dimensions with low cardinality so it's fine to leave it at the view but the product name it has a lot of values it is dimensions with high cardinality and it's really worth to discuss it with the users whether they really need such a filter in the view and if you find out no one needs it just remove it from the view just to have a good performance at tableau 
Now let's move to the next filter tip is that let's say that the users really want to see the product name or the customer ID any dimension with high credibility in the view. So here the tip is to change the filter modes. So instead of having a drop down list or a list, we can use a wild match for dimensions with high cardinality. So why having a list of all the products or the customers in the view is a bad thing in Tableau or bad for the performance? Well, each time Tableau has to go to the data source or to the database and prepare a distinct list of all the customers or all the products to be presented in the view. So instead of having a list, we could go and change it to wildcard match. And as you can see, Tableau is not preparing anything. So we don't have any values to be presented in the view. Only if the customers start interacting with the quick filter, then after that, Tableau gonna go to the database and brings the relevant values. And with that, we are avoiding using a lot of resources and unnecessary calculations in Tableau. So if you have a dimensions with high cardinality, either avoid using it, or if you want to use it, just use the wildcard match. All right, so let's move to the next best practice in Tableau is as well about optimizing the performance in Tableau, which is start using the apply button in your quick filters, because if you don't use it, let me show you what's going to happen. Each time I'm deselecting something, it is like a query sent to the data source. So this is one query, second query, third query, fourth query, and so on. So each time I'm clicking on my filters, there will be generated a lot of queries to the data source, which is consuming a lot of performance. So instead of having such a filter, we can customize and add the apply button. So as we learned before, we can go over here, then customize and show apply button. So now as I'm clicking on those values in the filter, no query is generated to the data source. So we are not using any resources in Tableau. And once I'm done selecting what I need, then I'm gonna hit okay or apply. What can happen? One query gonna send to the data source to bring the result to the view. So with that, we are reducing the number of queries that our visualizations is generating in Tableau, which is really great for the performance. So my recommendation here, if you have a filter like the subcategory or a dimension with high cardinality where you are using a list, use apply button because the users will not select only one value, they usually select multiple values and then at the end they can apply. But a filter like the category, we have only three values, like it doesn't worth to use apply button, it's only three, so the user is gonna maximum like generate three queries. So it's fine to not use apply button with the dimensions with really low cardinality. So with the high cardinality or medium cardinality like the subcategory, go and use apply button. All right, the next filter tip that we have is as well about the performance in Tableau, which is avoid using exclude and always use include if it is possible. So for example, if we go to the subcategory, we have here the option of using include or exclude. So if you are using exclude values, those queries that are gonna be generated in Tableau are more complex than include. More complex means more resources and might slow down the report or the view in Tableau. So avoid using exclude when it's possible. So I'm gonna switch it back to include, which has better performance. All right, so let's move to the next one. And I promise you, this is the last one about the performance, which is minimize the number of quick filters in your view. Those quick filters gonna take not only the space and the view, but also gonna generate a lot of queries, a lot of stress, gonna bring the whole performance in Tableau down. So try to avoid using a lot of quick filters and discuss with your users each time they need new filters, whether it's really necessary to put it in the view. Because I saw a lot of projects that the users always want a lot of filters. So try to discuss them and not always bringing a new quick filter to the Tableau because you're gonna end up having really bad performance in the view and no one's gonna be happy having bad response time in the visualizations. So try to minimize the number of quick filters in Tableau so that everyone is happy. So now let's bring more filters to our view. We're gonna go, for example, and pick the order date. I'm gonna show it as a filter. Let's take the location informations, the country, and as well maybe the city. 
and now we have to start sorting those informations. I usually start in my projects with the first filter is the date or the time aspect that we have in the visualization and here we have only the order date so we're gonna drag and drop it on the top because the usually the users can start thinking which date which year I want to see in my visualizations so they're gonna focus always first on the time and the date aspect. And after that, we have two kinds of informations or two hierarchies in the quick filters. So we have here the location informations, we have the city and the country, and then here below we have the informations about the product and as well they are hierarchy. So here we have to not mix them together. So separate them. First, start with the topic, for example, the location. So first we're gonna talk about the city and the country, and then we're gonna talk about the product informations. And here follow as well the logical order in our hierarchy. So our hierarchy starts, for example, with the country as a higher level than the city. So start always with the higher level, then move down to the lower level. So for example, here we should bring the country on top and then the city should be below it. And if we take, for example, the postal code, let's have it as well in the filter, the postal code should be below the city. So as you can see in the quick filter, we are rebuilding the logical order of the levels in the hierarchy. The same goes for the product. So we have first the category, the subcategory, then the product name, here everything is fine. So with this, as the users start filtering the data, they start from top to down. So there is like logical order of the field, which really makes sense. All right, so let's move to the next filter tip that we have. Do not use all values in dimensions with very low cardinality. So what I mean with that, for example, let's check the country. The country has only four values and really it makes no sense to use all because it's only three values or four values and the users can go and select those values without now selecting all or deselecting all. So this dimensions is really low cardinality and we can go and remove this option. So let's go to the customize and remove it. With that, we have like more space to show to the users and this option usually takes a lot of space. All right, so let's move to the next one to the city and let's check the values. As you can see, we have a lot of values and here it makes sense to leave it as it is. So we're gonna leave the all values, the postal code as well. It's like relative high cardinality. So we're gonna leave it. The category here, we have only three values. So it really makes no sense to use the all values values so I'm gonna go and remove it as well from here and with that we have now more space we didn't waste a space for that the subcategory here let's make it bigger a little bit and see you can see we have yeah a lot of values and it makes sense to select all subcategories or deselect so I'm gonna leave it for that so that means we just change that for the category and the country which is really dimensions with very low cardinality All right, so now we're gonna move to the final filter tip that I have for you that I usually use in my projects, which is as well about the design and the look and feeling in Tableau. So here we're gonna use the suitable filter modes in the quick filters. So let's see what I mean with that. First, we're gonna start with the order dates or with the date that we have usually in our view. I usually tend to use here like a continuous field instead of a list of distinct values. So what I mean with that, I usually go over here on the year of order date, right click on it and convert it to continuous. So with that, we can have like a range between two values, which can have as well less space in Tableau. So let's go and switch it. So now, as you might already notice, the order date, the quick filter did disappear because we changed the role from discrete to continuous. So let's go and show it again. And as you can see now, we have the quick filter very minimum and not taking a lot of space. So this is really nice as a start to have a range between two values for the date. Let's move to the next one. We have the country. So the country is a dimensions with very low cardinality. And here I tend always to use a list with multiple values. So everything here is correct. Let's check that. So it is multiple values, a list. So I'm gonna leave it as it is. The next one, we have the city. Here we have a lot of values. And here we are, can only see like three values from the whole filter. Doesn't make sense to have it as multiple value list. Instead of that, I would gonna say this is dimension with medium cardinality. We're gonna always tend to use a drop down for that. 
So I always keep this single value. It's like restriction that has no meaning. So we're going to go with the multiple value drop down. And with that, as you can see, we have a minimum space. We have only like one value that we can see. So if the users want to select the cities, so the user is going to go and select the values that they need and then close it. So it's really minimum and don't take a lot of space. The next one, we have the postal code. As well here, we have the same situation. A dimension with a medium cardinality. We have like a lot of values. So we will not leave it as a list. We're going to have it as a drop down menu. So as you can see, the size compared to the city is really big in the visualization. So we're going to go as well over here and change it to multiple values drop down. The next one is the category. It's exactly like the country. Only three values, very low cardinality. We're going to leave it as it is. And I think for the subcategory, you already know that. It has like medium cardinality. We're going to go over here and make it a drop down. So now we're going to move to the last one. We already talked about it. The product name is huge and has a lot of values. The best practices here is to use a wildcard match for this value. And for example, let's take another one. Let's take the first names. So I'm going to show the filter over here and we're going to bring it just down the last one beneath the product name this as well is a huge filter it has a lot of values and here is as well dimension with high cardinality so we're gonna go and switch the modes to a wildcard match exactly like the product name so as you can see we have now a lot of filters which is not really good for the performance but we saved a lot of spaces as we change the filter modes so with that, we have really nice quick filters on the right side, not taking a lot of spaces. So with that, I covered all the tips and tricks or best practices that I usually use in Tableau projects if I'm using filters. All right, so with that, you know the best practices that I usually follow once I start creating filters in Tableau. And next, we will learn the different ways on how to sort our data in Tableau. And if you like my content and you want to support the channel, then I really appreciate it if you support, like, and comment. This is really gonna help the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.